Now we're going to go to New Orleans, and we are just on the phone with Aura Bagado, who is immigration reporter with Reveal from the Center for Investigative Reporting. Her latest stories headlined immigrant children forcibly injected with drugs lawsuit claims and migrant children sent to shelters with histories of abuse allegations. Aura, tell us what you found. Hi, Amy. Um, we've been looking into these uh, migrant shelters for a while, and we have found over 100 um, allegations, investigation violations, uh, crimes for which people were sent to prison, um, and other kinds of examples uh, in which uh, some pretty serious stuff happened. Uh, sometimes that has to do with the forcible injection of heavy psychotropic drugs um, on, on sometimes pretty young children, um, sexual assault allegations, uh, solicitation of child pornography for which someone is currently serving, a, I believe, a 10-year sentence. But some pretty horrific stuff. And could you describe, Aura, what the effects you learned about what the effects have been of some of these psychotropic drugs that children have been forcibly injected with? And who gets to choose um, that they are being injected? What do they know about their medical histories? Yeah. Um, what happens is that children uh, go to um, a first shelter, and sometimes they're uh, stepped up. That's the, the term that the government uses, is they're stepped up uh, in terms of if they see a behavior that they don't like in children, uh, they can be referred to a psychiatrist who then independently makes a determination. Um, in the case of a family here in New Orleans that I've been spending time with, uh, there was a nine-year-old boy who never had a, a history of uh, mental illness. He repeatedly talked about uh, wanting to leave, wanting to run away, wanting to connect, reconnect, reunite with his mother, um, and uh, try to run away. And because of that behavior and some other behaviors, uh, he was then referred to a psychiatrist, as I explained. That psychiatrist created a narrative in which he said that he recommended the child um, be placed uh, under certain drugs, and uh, the government then decided to take him to the Shiloh Treatment Center, which is uh, a place right outside Houston, Texas. Um, he was drugged there uh, without his consent and without his mother's consent for nearly six months. The government knew the entire time where his mom was. They conducted two home visits where she lives, and they refused to give her custody of her child. She she begged. She she sometimes was angry. She sometimes uh, tried negotiating. She tried so many different ways and multiple text messages that I saw between her and the caseworker and her and other workers at this facility in shot in uh, in Texas. Uh, and they would not give her her child back. Sometimes the response was nothing. Uh, she wouldn't hear back from them for several days. It was often something like, uh, "This doctor's." orders. He's been prescribed that, and we can't do anything about it. Um, and, you know, when I talk about a, a residential treatment center, people might think that this is, uh, you know, some kind of serious uh, inpatient um, a building or perhaps, you know, a, a large kind of a state in which people can, can really heal. Uh, what our investigation found is that there are a lot of properties that are associated uh, with Shiloh, even though it only uses one main address. Most of those properties are trailers. And Aura, as far as you know, how long has this been going on? Uh, Shiloh, in particular, first got its contract from the government in 2013 to house immigrant children, um, but it has been housing children in general for a lot longer. Um, several years before then, um, a child that was in Shiloh's custody died from being restrained there. Um, it was still able to keep its license and continue operating, and um, it, there have been violations 
solutions uh, that the government, the, the federal government knows about, that local officials have been outraged about, and that the state of Texas itself, I mean, uh, we found a lot of this through public record. Uh, you can see inspection records as recently as December. Uh, there's a report that said that, you know, very serious, uh, some of these psychotropic medicines were left out in the reach of children uh, where, where they could just... Where, they could just access them. Um, there are a lot of a lot of inspection reports that indicate that uh, not everything was up to par there. Um, I wanted to bring Frank Ordonez back into the conversation. You also reported Wednesday that um, Trump planned to erect tent cities to house immigrants since the start of his presidency. Reading from the beginning of your story, uh, you write, the Department of Homeland Security asked Congress for $95 million to erect tent cities in two locations in Texas to detain all immigration violators, according to a budget document shared with McClatchy and provided to Congress in March of 2017. Um, can you talk about the so-called soft-sided structure facilities in Tornillo and Donna, Texas, uh, to house immigrants, possibly unaccompanied children or families, after the U.S. sees this surge in the number of immigrants crossing its southern border during the Obama administration? Yes. I mean, essentially what we're seeing is that the Trump administration, partially because of the, the zero-tolerance policy, but because they've been pushing this enforcement um, since the beginning of the administration and had obviously planned to increase this enforcement right from the beginning, really since the campaign, um, they ran out or are running out very quickly of detention space and these child shelters. Uh, they have no more room to put them there. About, there's about 11,200, more than that, uh, children who are held without parents in these type of shelters. They're about 95 percent full. So they need this extra space. So they're building these tent cities uh, to hold these children and those uh, on military bases um, in order to accommodate uh, the additional children uh, that are being held. Um, the ones that the tent cities are being, we're told, are for unaccompanied minors not the separated children. But if the children weren't separated, there would be more space in those facilities. So these tent cities are uh, to kind of make up for that missing space. And finally, Auto Bogado, we you've been reporting on this for a while, before zero tolerance policy was put into effect six weeks ago, and then Trump has reversed it with an executive order. People don't even understand why he needed an executive order to do this. But uh, when you talk about sexual abuse, kids being injected with drugs, being sent to psychiatrists to ask what their problem is when they are just asking for their parents to be reunited with their parents, and then when they're upset, being injected or being given pills. Um, the number of people they need to staff these places now, with the influx of children they're imprisoning and families will make them even more vulnerable. Is that not right? I mean, what level of scrutiny does any person who is hired get right now, as these centers try to desperately staff up for thousands more people? Right. Uh, what these centers, these nonprofits, sometimes they're private companies, sometimes they're religious, sometimes they're not, what they consistently uh, have said in the past is, you know, we do a, we do a background check on everybody. Um, that's probably true. Um, I don't know how extensive that background check is. Um, also, a background check, it's likely that a lot of people would pass a background check and not necessarily um, understand how to deal with, uh, you know, particularly young children who have experienced a lot of a lot of trauma. Uh, it's hard to say. I obviously can't look into the future and say, oh, for sure, we'll see more allegations and uh, more arrests and crimes um, that we can confirm. But, um, you know, when you have a lot of people that are coming into a space, a lot of young people, a lot of extremely vulnerable people, people who've been trafficked, people who have been through a tremendous abuse, and not to mention the journey alone, um, that does, you know, create a very vulnerable population, and we know uh, that vulnerable populations often are a, a prime target, unfortunately, an easy target uh, for abusers. So, again, I can't predict what's going to happen. Um, I don't think it would surprise a lot of people if, if we start hearing uh, about more allegations in the future.
Well, we want to thank you, Ara Bagado, for joining us, immigration reporter for Reveal from the Center for Investigative Reporting. We'll link to your pieces, immigrant children forcibly injected with drugs lawsuit claims, and migrant children sent to shelters with histories of abuse allegations. We want to thank Franco Ordonez, a White House correspondent from McClatchy, Washington Bureau. His latest story will link to Trump's immigration order replaces one crisis with another. Uh, this is Democracy Now! We're going to go abroad next to Egypt to learn about what's happening in Yemen. The U.S.-backed Saudi UAE attack on Yemen. We're going to learn about what's happening to Yemeni prisoners in UAE, UAE jails in Yemen. Stay with us.